Greetings, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I am Nick. And we are the Goslings. And if you are ready, then we are ready. We will go ahead and kick it off with the toast. Let's do it. Grab your favorite drinking vessel and join us. Uh, you want me to start? Yeah, you start. Yeah. All right. Take up the broken sword of your father. And strike down the darkness. Amen. Cheers. Mm. Ah, yes. Ah. Well, we got a great show for you guys today. We're really looking forward to it. But before we jump into the interview, let's get through our prerequisites. Yeah, glad everyone's watching tonight. Uh, if you haven't yet already, we'd love your support. Take up the broken sword of your finger. Strike down the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously. Yes. And uh, give this video a like as well. Share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think I'll leave it at that. I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> yes. I strongly suggest you do it. Uh, <laughs> it is appreciated. Helps us out greatly. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. um, the uh, let's, let's talk about our sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tell us about uh, what we got up here. These are fantastic. This is a Kothon Spartan mug. Yes. Handcrafted by Joel Cherico from CherikoPottery.com. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a master potter. Yes. And he handcrafts each and every one of these, hand paints each and every one of these. Uh, they are amazing. They're beautiful, high quality. I, yep. I haven't broken one yet. <laughs> I'm Despite really proud our best of myself. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but they're but they're great. And they're designed to be what we're assuming is the closest uh, uh replica if you will mm -hmm. to what the spartans actually carried the yeah. kothon which is mentioned in the historical record yeah but there's nothing to disc uh, other than what's in the historical record written down we don't have any pictures there's yeah. no, no there were no uh paintings drawings anything like that mm -hmm. so he made these by collaborating with stephen pressfield the great Stephen Pressfield. Yeah, who is somewhat of a subject matter expert on the Spartans. <laughs> absolutely. And this was what they came up with. Yeah. Check it out at CherokoPottery.com. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you would also like to look as cool as you feel with uh, with your Kothon Spartan mug, then you can't go wrong with Jardani Jovanovic hair care mm. products made by real men for real men. Or as I like to say, be as sexy as you are deadly. Give 007 a run for his money. That's right. What was the one that you came up with? Oh, uh, give your better half a reason to doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Awaken your inner John Wick That's right. with Jardani Jovanovic hair and skincare products for men. Everything from beard balm to shampoos, uh, lotions, uh, body soaps, everything you could want, even hair growth serum. Yeah, it's all there. And um, Mike Fisher is the owner and proprietor of Jardani Jovanovic hair and skincare products. Yeah. And uh, he's a great guy. He's a big supporter of the show. Um, he's a really good friend. We love Mike and um, small family owned Christian company. Yeah, uh, they do everything themselves. It's just it's really impressive. Yeah. Jardani .com is the place to go. Check him out. Check him out. Get some stuff squared away for you or for the man in your life. That's right. Yeah. Love it. Very <laughs> good. We appreciate Mike's support of the channel. Yeah. Uh, and everyone watching and I thank you guys. Uh, we're really glad that you're here. And we think you are absolutely going to love tonight's guest. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got it all teed up. And without further ado, let's get into it. Kick it off, baby. Let's do it. Let's roll. Your YouTube feed is crap. Stop wasting your time watching bot-boosted shills and self-appointed gurus cloying for your attention. Instead, join the Goslings interview, live stream, and podcast. The Goslings, a dark-lit digital speakeasy of free thinkers. A super chat of radical truth-seeking wizards who eat trolls for second breakfast. Topics that'll make your mama's hair stand on end. Ideas that'll make your pastor's knees knock. Guests that will illuminate the hidden chambers of your mind. And interviews that strike down the darkness. Welcome to The Goslings. You seem to always have your head so clearly wrapped around the order of events. Um, and I struggle. As much as I study and read, I struggle to just really put these things in the right order. Well, it's, there's one really easy way of doing it, but uh, we don't um, for some reason. Um, so if you just put it around the chronology that Jesus provided in 
uh, Matthew 24 and Mark 13, and then add in the Luke 17 and 21 details. The language is there to fit the Luke one in, and it just adds a few more details. It's really, really easy. You get the abomination at the middle. So you get the first three and a half years, you get the second three and a half years. Mm. You get the two different tribulations that are talked about. Um, and then <clears throat> if you don't let people say to you that it's just uh, a topical groupings that he put it in, it's not chronological and say, well, if that were the case, you would think that the, the translation in the original Greek would reflect that would say something about that and there wouldn't be language to not support that so what they, we, we have to do when you're trying to do preconceived conclusions you have to ignore um, inconvenient passages and you have to reinvent what jesus said so the word then that's used in mark and in in, in matthew is the greek word toda and it means then, at that time. <laughs> it means specifically that. It's not a word that's been inserted. It's an actual Greek word. And when Jesus says, then this happens, take him at his word, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um, and it's in, in the right order. And then just place everything around what Jesus said, and not vice versa. But people want to redefine what Jesus said based on what the prophets said. Mm -hmm. The prophets add more information and context to what Jesus said, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, not vice versa. Right. Yeah. So really, the, I guess the, the, the best framework in the Bible for all of this is Matthew 24. Start there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's going to be one of the things I cover off. I'm doing two different seminars in, at, at, in Atlanta at the... Um, Sacred Word Conference, um, and one of them is on some of the terminology. So I'm going to be dealing with, uh, you know, things like wormwood. I'm going to be dealing with the spirit and vision aspects. I'm going to be dealing with uh, the scorpion beings and thumus and tribulation and those things. But the other one, I'm going to I'm going to lay down some chronology for people of end time revelation. And if you just sort of line it up, it just makes a lot of sense. Everything from about Revelation 6 to Revelation 14, 7 lines up perfectly to Matthew 24, um, say 7 to uh, to 20. Uh, 20 ends the end of the, uh, uh, the abomination and starts the last three and a half years because you get the summary in the last half of Revelation 14 of the last three and a half years. So you have the destruction of Babylon. It gives you, you get the mark, the destruction of Babylon and Armageddon. You get the exact order, and then you get the details that are going to follow that up with in Revelation um, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. It just, it just fits. And then once you have that chronology of Jesus, you can take any prophecy anywhere and slide it in. You will not have contradictions. Nice. Well, let, let me let me ask you a question. I kind of want to transition to AI and the rise of AI, but I know it's related to all of this, especially the events in Revelation. There's this idea about singularity where it's the kind of the point of no return in which AI basically go, runs away from us, yeah, right? Sure. It outpaces us. We can't catch Pandora's it. Pandora's boxes of, of no open, return, baby. basically. Yep. Yeah. Um, do you think... How long? Well, first of all, how long do you think it'll be till we reach that point? And do you think that's what we're seeing in Revelation 13 with the rise of the mark? Is that kind of the point? Yes, or we already yeah, that's part of that whole nexus of technologies that will be coming together. So, but and but we'll see that come together beforehand, but continue to develop until it hits that ultimate pinnacle. And so we're going to see just as people point to antichrist all the time and are incorrect <laughs> um, and there will be multiple antichrists that will come along um, you'll see multiple beast systems that people are going to point to and all it's going to do is discredit christians mm, um, so that people yeah. won't listen and it's not that they're not directionally correct <laughs> But you, you can't get ahead of end time chronology because events have to happen first before that happens. But this thing, it all has to be developing and working in that direction. So 
we're going to see birth pangs of those systems. We're going to see birth pangs of those antichrists. If, if you understand that getting stronger, everything makes sense. And then you won't conflate the wrath bowls with the trumpets with the seals because you get 25% destruction in the seals, then 33%. Mm -hmm. then 100%, except that Jesus would step in at the time of the wrath bowls. And that means before the last seven years, we're going to see wars that look like Armageddon's coming. We're going to see pestilence that looks like Armageddon. We're going to see all of these things. They're just, and it's going to seem like it, but it's going to get stronger. So, so much so, even the people running the world in Revelation 6, as it says at the end, with 25% destruction, they're going to hide in the earth saying it's the day of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not. There's worse to come. We haven't even seen the three woes yet or the seven thunders. Yeah. Then the three rows, the three woes are the last three trumpets, right? Isn't that right? Or no? Um, well, yeah, kind of. Um, so you get the first woe in Revelation 9. And that's the scorpion beings that are coming out. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Sounds fun. And then you get the second woe. Uh, and it's after, obviously, the abyss is open because the one who comes up out of the abyss kills the two witnesses at the midpoint of the last seven years. And then you get two possible, and you could say they're probably maybe the same thing uh, for the third woe because you don't get something that explicitly says the third woe but what you get is uh the word woe just like alas goes back to the same word as woe does so you get the <laughs> this this woe that comes with the war in heaven when the devil and oh, yeah. the fallen angels are sent down to the earth and you get woe 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 or alas 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 depending on which translation that you're reading for the destruction of babylon just after the midpoint so and that could be conflated as all of that third woe but we're not specifically told which one and the, and all of the mysteries of god are going to be fulfilled uh within the the days of the seventh trumpet so yeah, within that period, you're going to get those woes. And that's going, that 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 trumpet is going to overlap a little bit into the last half of the of, of the last seven years. So it, probably maybe even a few months or so, because uh, it's going to be a while before you have the uh, abom uh, the abomination with the crowning of Antichrist, the destruction of Babylon, and then the implementation of the, the mark it may happen within a few months. May, you know, whatever an hour might be sort of uh, explained at in that time, but that hour is the same language as the hour of trial and the hour of Babylon's destruction. So again, they're all sort of connected with, with the same language. And so I would say just slightly into the, the second half is when rapture would happen because that's when you know the mystery of god is fulfilled and that's part of the mystery which is the rapture so it's going to be fulfilled by then um at least i think that's how i connect everything some people might take that a little bit closer to the end of uh the the last seven years but before the year of the wrath bowls and you might get there with the thief of the uh, night allegory, which comes up with Jesus coming back as a thief of a night in Revelation 16, right, at the time of Armageddon. Trouble is, is that, as the book of Luke talks about, it's the days of the Son of Man, multiple days. Um, now, again, you could translate that as day or days, um, but when you match that up with Hosea 9, 7, you get the visitations of the Lord the day of the visitations, multiple visitations. He's coming back when he comes back for rapture, for second exodus, and then for Armageddon at three different points. And I think all after the midpoint of the last seven years. <laughs> You're going to have to educate Nick and the Nick's going to have to make me a flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make a nice graphic, <laughs> an infographic. Can you, can you put it in like, can you use the G.I. Joe's is what, else. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm going to need. That was awesome, Gary. That was great. Man, yeah. I don't think anybody's really ever really gone into that kind of detail about that before. That's cool. Um, so we were talking about it in our in Patreon only segment about um, AI and sort of how it plays into 
uh, the end times and the beast system. And, you know, we had talked a little bit about like the Terminator aspect of things, you know, um, could you, uh, for our public interview, could you sort of reiterate what we were talking about just with AI and the, the government sponsoring and pushing of AI and how this seems to be maybe an oikotarian demonic entity, yeah, so this this AI thing is, you know, we've got a pause that's being requested by uh, some. Uh, Elon Musk would be one of those because that this mm -hmm. thing's getting out of control, that it has the ability to supersede its programming, write its own language, walk around yeah. the programming, and that um, this has an existential threat to us. <laughs> Is, is really how they're putting it to us because it seems to be very anti-human. Yeah, it's mad and, it's and it hasn't even gotten any yeah. legs yet. So yeah. when, we, when we start to look at this sort of technology and that um, Elon Musk, who is heavily involved with this and he's dead set against what the uh, CEO of Google is wanting to do with it, um, and Elon may even launch a new company that is going to try and sort of offset and try and use this with proper parameters. But I still think it's still going to the same end. So I'm not sure whether that's going to do much good. But he he described AI as summoning the demon. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very specific choice of words, right, Gary? Very specific choice. And then when we match that up with it, that they're getting help from these spirit guides or... Right great white masters or celestial mafia or aliens or whatever <laughs> you want to call them. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, to develop this. And that uh, you have a concern that these are demons and fallen angels that they're that they're getting this technology getting the technology to develop this and that it's going to be used for those those sorts of purposes. Mm -hmm. And that these disembodied spirits of the Nephilim and the Raphaim, because they have counterfeit spirits and their spirits aren't permitted to sleep like humans, and they either are going to the abyss, they're going to roam the earth looking for a place of rest to, to possess, or somehow in their belief system they get to their heaven, which is Hades or Sheol, in the earth, probably in another dimension through a portal. Uh, that's what all their rituals are all about. Yeah. So... To interact as a disembodied spirit, as opposed to a fallen angel that can make its own body, make its own oikotarian. An oikotarian is a dwelling place for a spirit, as it's defined in Greek. And that shows up in habitation, the word habitation in Jude 1.6, where the angels left their habitation or their oikotarian, their dwelling place for their heavenly spirit. Uh, and in... 2 Corinthians 5, 2, in the house in heaven, a dwelling place for the spirit is like a house, right? Yeah. Um, and so you need to house the spirit, whether it's in the, the spirit world or in the physical world. And the oikotarian is, excuse me, I got an itch in my eye. This keeps no coming back today for some reason. Um, but anyways, uh, you have an oikotarian, that's the soul and the body that the spirit dwells in to interact in the physical world. Now, we are also talking about the image of the beast as a teraphim, mm -hmm. understanding that these were talking idols in the Old Testament and that the image of the beast is going to be able to speak and will probably house demons and that these walking or these talking idols were thought to house familiar spirits or shades or demons or Rapha spirits or daemons and demons as we know them from the New Testament. And that uh, technology is thought to be able to house these creations as well in some of the algorithms and systems and hardware that it creates an oikotarian within that technology that they're going to be sort of this life that is going to be running these these AI. So it may not be actually the AI itself that becomes super dangerous, but it's what the demonic spirits living in them will uh, become to, to do so. So it's very interesting with, you know, with the language the, that, that they're using today that they are talking about 
um, the dangers and that there's a demonic sort of element to this that I think they're grappling with to explain. Yeah. Um, I think the adepts who are funding them could explain it to them, but they're just going to march on and develop this no matter what. But, you know, as we, as I, I think I joked about in the first part of the show that they should be forced to watch a Terminator movie every day. So they get, <laughs> right. This is going to go wrong in a big way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or maybe like the rebooted uh, Battlestar Galactica, you know, where like, Oh, we made the Cylons. Oh, now we're on the run from the Cylons. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is uh, actually uh, like kind of interesting in that show in that by the like the last episode of that show, I think revealed that they weren't an advanced Earth civilization. They were like uh, an alternate human civilization. And yeah. it almost had like this weird Atlantean overlap. Yeah. Of, yeah. Like yeah. maybe which had me thinking while you were talking, like, I wonder if. Uh, this will sound maybe a little cheesy, but it had me thinking, like, I wonder if Atlantis tapped into AI, you know, or I mean, maybe they didn't have to, yeah, but, so, yeah. you know, all that stuff kind of it all sort of congeals together into this into this thematic sphere. It does. It's it's know? all about the past. And that's exactly what Battlestar Galactica was. Nothing is new under the sun. Everything keeps repeating oh, yeah. similar sort of ideology. Couple yeah. of things that I didn't mention in, in in earlier on in the show is is that they actually call in this technology they have, you know, uh, buzzwords and things for them that may not be the specific um, scientific name, but they they actually call daemons uh, things in their technology. They call it it actually daemons act act actually manage their systems. And that they also call demons or demons as intelligent programs. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who said? Who calls them that? Uh, this comes computer scientists. Yeah. This is just their wow. some of their lingo that they're using as they describe yeah. these different algorithms that 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 they're creating. I got a real basic example for you. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's been around forever. If you send, at least through Yahoo, if you yep. send a uh, an email to a, yep. a junk email address, you will get a mailer demon. It like literally oh, replies, reply at mailer demon, and it says your de or your email could not be delivered. That's interesting. And it's so like low yeah. level, but yeah, it it's is a weird choice of words, you know. And then they they also talk the demon as being like an arch archetypical program. Like mm -hmm. from the beginning, as you take that word back in Greek. Archetypal, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like an, an immortal being is the reference to this archetypical demon algorithm uh, or program. And that it it's like an like like an immortal and it operates um in in both the physical nature of the of the hardware that's out there and you, i mean you just can't sort of make this up yeah. um in terms of uh, of the language that they use so um it's so it's, grossly deliberate well they and, and if you understand that science honors their gods and their belief system and names everything after their gods and their belief yeah. systems yeah it starts to make some sense mm-hmm yeah. And there is this it's so funny. There's this um, false dichotomy between religion and science, you know. But as you say, science obviously seems to have its own religion. It's just not Christianity. That's really yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's polytheism. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, it goes back to the beginning of, um, you know, the Adamites and in that when adam learns all of this knowledge in in eden and he had to learn a lot of knowledge yeah. uh, he was running a piece of property from the nile to the euphrates and mm -hmm. it had orchards a lot of orchards a <laughs> lot of ranches a lot of crops um <laughs> all by himself uh -huh. <laughs> until eve was created for him um he would have to understand astronomy uh weather pattern i mean the technologies that our modern farmers have to have, and there's just him. Yeah. And so 
it's a lot to learn. So this knowledge was passed on to Cain, who passes it on to his son, Enoch. And Enoch takes it and puts it into the seven sacred sciences, which we understand as the seven liberal arts. And the first three sciences make up okay. philosophy, which is the arbitrator that guides or the theology that guides all of the seven sciences, That's philosophy right. being the love of Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, it's the theology is their theology is philosophy, the love of Sophia, the mother yeah. goddess. And it's the, and it's right at the pinnacle of polytheism in terms of their belief system. And that it had four goals. When they designed Enochian mysticism and the seven sacred sciences, mysticism came out of the seven sacred sciences. I call it Enochian mysticism because he created all the rituals for it to keep it from the mundane, the average humans, the people who didn't deserve the knowledge, and to develop this knowledge that eventually merged with the gods. Those four things right from the beginning were the goals. See how that matches up with the seven liberal arts being taught in university today. Mm. First thing was is to lead people away from God. So yeah. anything they teach, as long as it leads you away from God, like evolution, they don't believe in evolution, but it leads people away from God, they yeah. will teach. The second yeah. thing is, is to degrade God, to slander God, and they try and dismiss him, make him irrelevant. Then the other thing is they don't give God credit for anything. So they don't give him credit for making anything. Those are the first three things uh, of, of the original goals, uh, according to the Masons, of uh, the seven sacred sciences to, uh, that were formed into Enochian mysticism. The fourth thing is to honor their pantheon of gods, whether it's in the buildings or naming things after everything that we see in modern education and science is the polytheist system of old that was not secular it's mm -hmm. polytheist and that's why anything but god is allowed in the discussion yes that, right yeah. yeah if you're liking this let us know what you think in the chat tell us mm -hmm. what you're getting out of this interview uh really glad you're still here We've got more to come. So what yep. you've heard, you're going to hear just that much. You're going to hear all new content here in just a couple seconds. We're going to play the other half of the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we do that, real quick, we wanted to uh, mention how you can support the channel and help us grow and yeah. get more guests and bring you more great interviews like this. Yeah. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash the goslings. Yeah. Or you can scan the code. Yeah, scan the QR code. It's a cool little feature. Uh, the Patreon is this awesome thing. We we are building an amazing community of super cool, friendly, fun people yep. who are all kind of into the same sorts of things. And it's really fun because like no one agrees on everything, but like no one ever fights about anything. Yeah, no one ever fights about <laughs> it. Not even the Rapture. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly <laughs> enough. Know? Yeah. So if you love talking about the Rapture, but not fighting about it, <laughs> right. head on over to Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash the costly. It's a lot of fun though. We uh, we have multiple tiers uh, yeah. for you. You know, so if like. If you just want to know what our guest list is for the Goslings, yeah. as far as interviews go for the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. then we have that tier. But if you want to say have your product sponsored, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to, you know, have us mention your product, if you want, you know, a free T-shirt, if you want free swag, if you want discounts on merchandise, if you want access to behind the scenes content, yeah. if you want if digital downloads, digital downloads, and if you are really enjoying this particular ed episode, mm -hmm. there is some exclusive content that we. Uh, that we did just with this guest, just for our Patreon members, and you'd be able to hear that too. And typically, that's the stuff we're not allowed to say yes. on YouTube. So if you find this interview, you know, maybe a little too YouTube friendly or prosaic, you're like, man, I wish they'd talk about that naughty stuff. Guess what? We probably have. You get down and dirty over at Patreon. We do. Yeah. And uh, Patreon members usually get access to that stuff before everybody else Absolutely does because it's do. unedited like a week in advance yeah and uh it's a usually a good chunk of the interview it's yeah. very rare usually, sometimes the whole thing oh everything gosh, exclusive yeah. content and everything yeah a week in advance you can sign up at patreon.com and it, a lot of times it, a lot of times it ends up being um gosh like half an hour's worth of material yeah oh yeah so it's worth it you know, go to Patreon, uh, you know, go to patreon.com forward slash the goslings, scan the QR code, check it out. It asks some people in the chat, you know, yeah, that, like, dude, they're almost always in here talking. Yeah. They're super yeah, we got cool. some patrons watching right now. Yeah. Ask them what they think. Yeah. Ask them what they get out of it. Yeah. yeah. And if they tell you that it sucks, come let us know. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to mail them something. <laughs> That's right. 
you're getting an exclusive gift. <laughs> Shelby, so, uh, where's Shelby? Yeah, where's Shelby? <laughs> hey, tell us about your book real quick. Oh, yeah. So this channel actually got started because Nick and I are a couple of writers. Yeah. Uh, we're a couple of Christian authors. We write fiction. Um, I wrote the Heavenly Realms series, which you're seeing the QR code for the first book uh, in the series up on your screen right now. It's called Empyrean Falling, and uh, it is about angelic warfare. It is uh, basically, I think, Nick, you described it best as it's like 300 meets the Book of Revelation. Yeah, Gettysburg 300 and the Book of Revelation all, all blended in one story. together yep. into one meat yeah. pie. It, it is epic. It is literally the definition of the word epic. It's, <laughs> it, it reads like that. The yeah, story is built out man. like that. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And there's a seven novel series. It's available just like all these that we're about to tell you. They're all available in paperback, ebook. An audiobook and some of Nick's that we're going to talk about, I think, may be available in hardcover. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No. No. I'll tell you about mine. So, okay. Henry Half Moon. This is the this is the book that I like to mention. It's about a young NYU student. Yeah. Who doesn't believe in God, uh, but uh, he's called by gods he doesn't even believe in to cross over into the other dimension and battle a new uh invasion an invasion of a new uh kind of species of demon called the algalim yeah uh that are trying to restore the anunnaki and bring yeah. about the so if you're beast. into like all the cool weird esoteric, esoteric stuff that supernatural we talk about stuff, yeah yeah if you're like if you're like dude i love gary wayne i love Derek gilbert like i love ryan peterson you know i love all these cool people that like talk about all this weird stuff mm -hmm. You're going to like Henry Halfman. Yeah, and ultimately it's a faith journey, even though it weaves mm -hmm. in Greek mythology, the occult, ancient Sumerian. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's mixing all of those things in together, but Henry actually goes through a faith journey. And uh, if, you're a, if you're a believer in Christ, I think you're really going to like how it ends. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, so, well, that's all we got. I hope you guys uh, enjoy uh, those, those books. If you get one, let us know. Yeah. And uh, we're going to get back to the interview here, and we'll catch up with you guys on the back end of the interview. Enjoy. See you soon. Yeah. I've mentioned it before. Uh, forgive me if I've mentioned it in one of our interviews, but when I worked at a corporate office, we would uh, we would have these um, uh, 15 minute um, morning meetings, you know, morning huddles. And uh, it was an office, you know, buildings, a mostly like 70 percent women. And then, you know, all the other dudes in the office, there weren't a lot of like bros in the office, you know, is it a lot of what you call blue team. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people who, you know, vote D every time they go into the voting booth. And um, there were some cool people there, but whatever. But mm -hmm. in these huddles, everybody had to lead a huddle. You took a turn. You signed up. And at the end of the huddle, everybody had to give a quote, you know, a motivational quote for the day. Well, you could quote anything, but boy, howdy, you quote the New Testament. Mm. Mm -mm. Yep. No, that's nope. not permitted. Yeah. Nope. Or anything that might be associated with it, like intelligent design. Anything associated with it's <laughs> right. not permitted. It I thought about just like signing up for every one yeah. and then just reading the screw tape yeah. letters one one like paragraph at a time. Yeah. You know? And yet <laughs> and yet science is supposed to be about following the evidence, not leaving right. out the inconvenient evidence mm -hmm. or hearing arguments from all sides. Mm -hmm. Except for they have a preconceived conclusion, and it's it's not it's not science; it's junk science, and it's, it's a cult. all yeah, and it's all um, controlled by high level, powerful, rich polytheists, adepts, mm -hmm. and so if you don't do research that is designed to produce the outcome that they want, you don't get funded. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Well, or you're not allowed to become a professor or or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I have one quote here. There's because and, and, and I just pulled it out um, so we can sign another name to some of this demonology stuff. So Marco uh, Renessi of the Institute of Ethics and Energy of Technologies uh, says that computer sciences are all applied demonology. Wow. Wow. It down. Can you read it again, Gary? Computer sciences. Computer sciences are all applied demonology. Applied demonology. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then link that up with 
you know, the, the other words that I connected, like the algorithms and, and stuff back to daemons and things like that and yeah. archetypical immortal programs. Yeah. yeah there really is a, a ghost in the machine, as they say, you know. Yeah. Yeah, talk there about, actually uh, is. Talk about the pursuit of AI in the insane hmm. quest to live forever, because I think it's related to that. Sure it is. Hmm. It's to be like God. Same promise in Eden, knowledge and immortality. Yeah, because if you never the... die, you never have to face God's judgment. Yes. Wow. That's what they were hoping anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Good luck. You're going to need it. So, and, you know, with Adam and Eve, I mean, they got the knowledge of good and evil uh, yeah. from the tree of Gnosis, as they like to call it in, in polytheism. Trouble is, is they didn't any longer have access to the tree of life. So they got right. this additional knowledge, but it wasn't unlimited knowledge. Oh, uh, and they true. lost and, and, and they traded their immortality because they couldn't feed from the tree of life. And that's why two cherubims were put up to protect the gate so that nobody mm -hmm. was going to be allowed back in there. So it's about uh, being like God. And God is two things in polytheism. I think he's much more but this is their polytheist definition one is is a god has immortality so yeah. you want to vibrate into being a god mm -hmm. um, then uh, you have to have immortality and the second thing is you have to have unlimited knowledge yeah and they have to provide that access so that's why that nexus point with the mark of the beast is designed to deliver that mm. yep yeah Sure so the mark of the beast will enable people to presumably have unlimited knowledge uh, and yeah. will allow them to somehow cheat biological death. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Right. Because you're tapping into AI and it's probably implanted into a, an interface yep. that connects to your brain. And yeah. so, yeah, but but the real truth is, is that they won't have access to unlimited knowledge. It will be limited knowledge and even more limited knowledge as the true celestial mafia wants to limit it to you because they need servants. Even right. Mm -hmm. They want you to worship them like days of old. Yeah, there's a great deception that goes on uh, with these spirit beings. Um, I was reading, uh, I think we've talked about it before, but I was reading this chronicle that a friend sent me on, I think it was on Telegram. Maybe it was like a Reddit thread. I don't know. I'm old. Um, <laughs> and so, like, it's all the same to me at this point. But there was this guy who had compiled all of these anecdotes of people who had taken DMT or heavy psychedelics, and they had encountered the machine elves. They had encountered these spirit beings. And mm -hmm. all of these spirit beings on the other side um, portrayed themselves as being a benevolent, you know, educational entity, spirit guides, all this stuff. Yeah. But what was weird is that what all the, the creepy thing about the story and what made it relevant, I think, um, or prescient is whenever anybody would push back on any of these beings and and like question their authority or question them, yeah. they would yeah. immediately become vicious, hatefully yes. vicious. Yep. And then every now and then another being would come into the scene and the first being would flee or they would like argue amongst themselves over authority over the person interacting with sure. them. now now think about this yeah so if the mark of the beast has the ability to cause all who refuse to take it to die mm -hmm. it could do that with that connection even more efficiently for those who say hey i don't like what i bought into yeah Oh, that's so true. Yeah, you have buyer's remorse on that one. They flip the switch on you. Yeah. 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 And that mark of the beast system, because it's going to be like this sort of really advanced cloud everybody's sort of connected into, mm -hmm. it's going to control what you're allowed to have access or not to have access to, what you're permitted to. Yeah. Gary, have you seen that video? It's been out for several months now, uh, and I can't trace the origin point of it where the um, the guy is in an interview um, on a soundstage and he's talking about how at CERN they have started to uh, communicate with beings on the other side that are talking back to them. 
have I can't remember. Maybe we discussed this in our last interview when we talked about CERN. What's, but, this, what, what's the name of the show? Uh, I can't find any information. on It's this random clip that you'll see on oh, Instagram yeah. sometimes hmm. uh, where it's this guy who um, apparently works at CERN and he's been talking about how like they've tapped into something where they are communicating with entities on yep. the other side and those entities. Well, they are. I mean, when yeah. you get it, it, it was, it's common knowledge that not common knowledge, but <laughs> there's information out there that if you are a high level adept, yeah, uh, you could communicate with these beings on the other side. Yeah. Or, uh, so when we're talking about, um, scientists, communicating with them they're either creating a technology that permits that or they're in contact with a necromancer that can connect them right that yeah. just shows you that they're 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 in behind the scenes on on the helping of it so we have an analogy in world war ii of what the end time will look like yeah yeah with uh, nazi germany Hmm. Okay. Um, so you have this Reichschurch that he forms that is the uh, Volkish overlay onto Theosophy, so they call it Ariosophy, um, and that they believe they descended from giants and they're trying to backwards engineer themselves to create giants, and that they were going forward with, um, you know, specific sort of pedigreeing of intermarriage to, you know, produce nothing but blonde hair, blue eyed <laughs> Atlanteans or Thulians, which is another Norse mythology for an island like yep. um, uh, Atlantis. And that um, this whole Nazi regime was created by Rosicrucian social masonry uh, to create national socialism, a left wing um, organization uh, to get under control communism, which they originally set off to eliminate a rival more pure bloodline in uh, russia and of course they also launched that same virus into uh china to get rid of the uh, the xi bloodline and the uh, another pure strain that was a rival to the western europeans uh -huh. um so you have these these uh organizations like the thule society the german orden uh organization and many other masonic groups uh, that are combining with the religion of theosophy to put this Aryan religion together that they call Ariosophy. So you have secret societies forming this national socialism progressive state because that was the Eastern version of progress progressivism and that they had an archetypical antichrist figure and one of Nostradamus's three antichrist figures who is wanting to have a third reich or a thousand year reign or a false mm -hmm. millennium and you have this genocide starting with the people of judah you have this complete sort of analogy of what the end time will look like then you combine that with this rapid advancement of technology yeah right mm -hmm. that is otherwise unexplainable um and they develop things like the tiger and panzer tank which is the frame that still is used to today revolutionized tank warfare they just couldn't produce enough of them fast enough yep. they produced the jet engine the rocket mm -hmm. engine they produced the single wing plane there's some sort of maybe time thing this bell-shaped thing that nobody really knows what it was yeah and it's the basis for a lot of our modern science technology and rocketry and other things even to this day that was taken across on operation paperclip mm -hmm. and that this happened in a very short period of time when they had no money. Yes. And they were broke. Post Weimar Republic. They, yeah. They became the most powerful army with the most advanced uh, military strategy, introducing Blitzkrieg that the world had never seen. Mm -hmm. That comes out of nowhere. So they asked them, Yeah. How did this happen? And they told them that. Because if now if you understand that they, they had this Gnostic type of religion, this polytheist religion with these secret societies, and the leaders were adepts of these secret societies and mystical religions, they talked to the invisible ones, the great white brotherhood, uh, the same beings that we're talking about who passed on this information to develop it for them. And we're seeing that rapid transformation today as we head towards national socialism on a globalist scale 
Um, easy, easy, Gary. It's democratic <laughs> socialism. <laughs> National socialism. We just call that the Nazis. We don't, yeah. you know, those are the bad guys. We, yeah. Yeah, you know, they except that they do all the same things right. that the National yeah. Socialists did before they went into genocide, as all of those social places did. Just as the National Socialists in Germany got elected and then eliminated democracy uh -huh. That's <laughs> into right. a one-party yeah. system. Yeah, uh -huh. they're yeah. not slaying us on mass yet, but mm -hmm. they will. And they, they will. created subhumans. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at the uh, the left wing philosophy and how many people are no longer human. They are subhuman. They're not yeah. part of the supremacy theology that they have and yeah. don't deserve to be part of the new world order. You're the um, neo proletariat. Yeah. And child. so we have that in a stronger way yeah. as what happened in World War II. So we have this ideology of that nothing new is under the sun and mm -hmm. it keeps getting closer and closer as, as we get there. So I think, I think we should be very much aware of, of uh, this whole connection back to prehistory and all of the imagery that they are making us swim into. They're just preparing us uh, for the next levels that they're going to be going to. I mean, who can argue today that our media doesn't represent the media in Nazi Germany or in, in communist Russia? You have, a, you have the oligopolies that have come forward and out of the closets as true globalists and true socialists. They're not for free enterprise. Mm -hmm. They're for monopolies and oligopolies that are owned and run by the rich, by the royales, by the elite. Mm -hmm. They they don't have uh, have uh, the average person's um, best interest in mind. This is a system that controls the complete education system. It's a system that controls yeah. the complete science. It controls the media. Uh, the media. Yeah. I mean, the it media. controls entertainment. Yeah. It controls everything. Yeah. Yeah, we're and we're there. Oh yeah, Oceania has always been at war with East Asia. Oceania has always been friends with Eurasia. It's yeah, all, you know, it's the propaganda is all right there. That's why this is important. Yeah, that's yeah. why this matters. Hey, this is like what 30, 40 years worth of work, Gary. Yeah, about about thirty years. Yeah, thirty. Wow. Yeah. 30 years. Yeah. A lot of it was just, you know, the first set, say, you know, 15 years or so was just doing the research in the Bible to understand prophecy. And then I ran across these giant things and I had to sort of figure that out because then going, <laughs> oh, I don't know whether I want to deal with that or not. But, <laughs> but you have okay. to because <laughs> you have to. Uh, you have to. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, and then, but you know what really took me down uh, the rabbit hole was when I decided to add in my knowledge of uh, history and mythology, and then that led me to say, well, to have people sort of understand the veracity to what polytheist cultures thought, you have to understand the religion. When I dug into that, I understood that the secret societies came out of the mystery schools which were started by the mystical religion to educate the elite. And then they set up these secret societies and that's where masonry takes their beginnings to is to before the flood with the creation of the mystery schools. And just like you get the beta houses and alpha houses and stuff on universities today, it's the same things or the skull and bones. So it's the same sort of ideology. So, yeah. So when I went down that secret society rabbit hole, it was for a decade because I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. And so, um, and I also had to take time to learn about the other religions so I could understand how that sort of intermixed. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's a lot of research in there. And you can't unsee it, you know? <laughs> no, you can't, I mean, but it's better. Time. It's better to see it. Once you deal with that cognizant dissonance and we all go through it at different stages and different levels. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it doesn't change things, but you understand things. Yeah. Um, but also it comes with being frustrated watching a world gone mad. Yeah, that's true. It does. Yeah, it increases your stress levels when you can see the, the code 
in the matrix mm. you know but yeah. at the same time well said. you know you're saying i won't have to you know you're saying i can dodge <laughs> bullets no neo i'm saying you won't have to yeah i mean you'll be so far ahead of the power curve yep. you know it it doesn't really it won't affect you as much as it'll affect people who are downstream who are pulling their hair out wondering why this is happening yeah yeah you know that's that's sort of like in a way I look at it as that's like part of your ministry is that like you are alleviating stress through understanding because God is not the author of confusion <laughs> and neither are the men that he sends to educate us. Yeah. And the one who built the matrix is the architect, the great yeah. architect of the universe that the uh, Masons call Lucifer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're going to smack it, baby. Yeah. Um, Gary, we got uh, probably what? Five yeah, minutes, five minutes, maybe. Left, yeah. Um, real quick, uh, we want to make sure you get to cover everything you want to cover. Um, we could take longer if you need to, no, um, we're good. but, uh, I wanted to mention the conferences, uh, in Atlanta, I think, is that right? Yep. In case anybody maybe wanted to buy tickets to that, if any tickets were still available, where could people find out information on that? Yeah, you could just Google, uh, sacred word, um, revelation prophecy conference and uh, it, it will come up um and uh, yeah i think there still are some tickets available and it's uh in atlanta on the weekend of uh, i don't have a calendar in front of me but i think it's like the 25th and the 26th so uh, friday saturday and sunday is um the speeches and conference will be on the 20 on the saturday and the sunday and uh so that's probably the easiest way to get tickets. Um, I'm also down in Orlando for the uh, uh, <clears throat> the reveal report. Um, and I understand they're selling tickets. And we're going to be doing live shows there. And we'll have some booths up and standing. And that's uh, starting on the 12th and the 13th, Friday and the Saturday. Yes. I got the dates right. And, uh, and I don't have a connection for the tickets on that. But just, you know, Google the, the reveal report Orlando. Uh, conference and uh, you'll be able to access that as well that's awesome Gary, Gary, yep. before we let you go i want to ask you one quick question yeah the prominence of your book people always finding your videos on youtube but we don't see much on social media <laughs> why is gary wayne not a social yeah. media and by user? the way we took social media off for lent we went on a social media fast and it was like the greatest thing we yeah, ever done great yeah. Um, I, I will be getting back on social media. I used to be big on social media um, up till uh, about two or three years ago. Um, and it, just, it was just, it's just been a matter of time. I put so much effort into writing the second book. I just yeah. didn't have time to answer all of the emails and uh, that come in and, and to answer the questions on social media. So um, I was, you know, I used to be known for being all over social media. So, um, <laughs> once, once I get by this first sort of, you know, get the book, you know, into the hands of the, of the publishers and I'm done with the consulting back and forth on it, then, um, I'll be more on, certainly I'll be starting out with Facebook. Um, I still have a Facebook account. People okay. can, I, I do spend a little bit of time on there. I have a group in Facebook. I haven't been in that group often as well i've got you know, people running it for me that's gary wayne and the genesis 6 conspiracy i've just reopened my twitter account i've reopened i've opened a, an instagram account um and i'm looking at uh, some of the other alternatives i you know because of time and because of what was going on in the social media world i closed down just basically facebook to keep one open uh, sure. Until I saw where things were going and with the censorship and, and right. everything else. So, yeah. yeah, it's one it's on my agenda to decide exactly which ones I want to be on. And then I need to be able to spend if you're going to do social media, I have to be able to devote about four hours a day to do it properly. Yeah, that's yep. right. Uh, and then if I want to do then I still have to answer the, the emails and stuff like that. And then if I want to do shows and to write another book. I, I, so. I will be back. I just haven't been. And I, I wish I was because I really love working in the social media because you have so much direct yeah. contact and uh, you really get to uh, to test your abilities to encapsulate information 
in a short piece quickly yeah. when you've got um, <laughs> people that are calling you all sorts of names and stuff like that. And saying, oh, here's, yeah. We don't have to do that, but here's the information. <laughs> what are their names? Tell me who they are, Gary. I will find them. <laughs> well, will when find you them. get back on social media, when you're back on the horse, so to speak, I hope you don't get too busy to come back and, and interview us again, especially when your second book comes out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're really excited about that. We can't wait to see it. Yeah. All of our fans are too. All of our friends and audience members, they've all been like, when's the second book coming out? When's the second book coming out? Like, when it comes out, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, you know what? Um, okay. This will take like, I just, yep. we can actually do the same thing like we did last time where I was like, hey, Gary, tell me about Atlantis. And you're like, that'll have to be its own episode. So maybe <laughs> this will have to be its own episode. But I just want to ask you, uh, this is just sort of like a silly question. Um, I was watching a thing this morning on uh, the face of Mars, you know, the yep. uh, the face in the Mars mm -hmm. photos, you know, yep. and then beside them, there's like it has its own like almost Giza necropolis of yep. pyramids. You think yep. there's any legitimacy to that or does that need to be a whole other episode? Oh, I think there's probably legitimacy to that. Yeah. Um, so if if one sort of understands that you could translate Genesis one in two different ways mm -hmm. um then you might understand that the world is a little older than standard yeah, christian theory. dogma that takes the genealogy just back to adam as opposed to anything before that mm -hmm. and that the world became form and voidless i won't go through the whole theology of this i mean i spent i did a three-hour presentation at a converse conference going through it word by word but um in that destruction, in that gap between Genesis 1, 1, and 2, after God created the heavens and the universe, and before the renewal of the earth, uh, that happens that Psalms 104 talks about when God sends his Holy Spirit that shows up in Genesis 1, 2. You have a collapsing of the firmament in that destruction into the earth that causes the chaos and the earth would be destroyed down to its foundations hmm. and then you have a renewal of the earth uh in the six days and so the first thing that one of the first things that's going to happen is is to create life you have to recreate the firmament and that's a separation of the waters mm -hmm. right to oh, create yeah. the firmament okay. and the firmament's called heaven so if you look at even Exodus 20, when it's talking about when God created heaven and earth in the, in the, in the first six days, heaven is defined as the firmament, what's outside the firmament, and the uh, place where God dwells. Three different meanings. And in uh, Genesis 1, the firmament is called heaven. So it fits with Exodus 20 if you want to sort of look at it from that sort of perspective. But you had to separate these waters that would have collapsed down on the earth within an angelic war that destroyed the world. So yeah. if you had the earth that's destroyed in this angelic war, in that gap, sometime before Genesis 1-2, after Genesis 1, then if there was life on Mars, which people speculate that there probably was, and that there might be buildings or architecture there, and that it was part of, a, you know, maybe more than one planet that had life in our solar system. I mean, who knows? Uh, and that that would have been also destroyed in the uh, angelic war as well. So I think that's a good possibility. I think we'll be told something completely different as to how life was on Mars by the people okay. who control science and NASA. But um, I, I think that's possible. That is such an awesome answer. Yep. Um, we might have to get you and Tim together. You and Tim. I was going. just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> He's got this whole presentation on like Mars fossils. You know that like, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys might have uh, some interesting crossover there. Um, that's Gary Wayne, um, Mr. Alberino, you're talking about? Oh, uh, no, no Tim, Tim Cohen. Tim Cohen. He's uh, he wrote a book called uh, The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea, but he also has oh, yeah. that whole <laughs> other thing where he talks yep. about uh, the Mars fossils and all that stuff. Yep. And um, anyways, uh, killer answer, Gary. Man, thank you. We've gone way over three hours, and you always bring the heat, Gary. And yeah. 
I, uh, I really I don't think appreciate I've ever had you. two pages of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like in the margins. I'm in this the margins with minimal doodles, Gary. That's how that's how, you know, like, you know, that's it's true. been yeah. chock full. Uh, Gary Wayne, the author of the Genesis six conspiracy, uh, friend of the channel, uh, gentleman scholar. Thank you again for your time. We really appreciate it. Our motto here on the Goslings is go forth and strike down the darkness. Um, so. I really would just like to ask you any last parting words for our audience members that they might use to strike down the darkness in their daily lives. Yeah. Um, spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the Amen word. to that, brother. Yeah. Hey, if you guys have been enjoying this interview and you'd like to hear the rest of it, including some really down and dirty stuff that we're not allowed to say here on YouTube, uh, head over to patreon.com forward slash the goslings. We'd love to have your support there and share exclusive content with you. That's right. Keep it cool. And remember, these are interviews that strike down the dark. They do indeed strike down That's the right. darkness. They strike down all the darkness. That's right. Strike it down hard. So hard. So hard. All right. Well, there it was, everybody. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we hope that you all had a great time. And uh, don't forget to like and share, subscribe, do all that stuff. But uh, we're just really grateful that you were here tonight. Yep. So, you know, we're uh, we're happy to move along for the week. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing you guys here next week, too. And yeah, and if you wouldn't mind, just hit the like button real quick. because It really, really, really helps. It tells YouTube that because you like this video all of the information that they have taken from you they're going <laughs> to yeah. compare that to other people's information that they stole and they're going to say hey these guys might like this interview too mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway it would help us yeah it's a good uh, way to tell youtube that we don't suck yeah and you know what don't even think of it as a thumbs up think of it as a middle finger in the face <laughs> of the beast <laughs> and let was... your freak flag fly people <laughs> it's a, it's just a thumb in the eye yeah. of the beast you yeah know? absolutely yeah, just... Grab it by the lips and yank as hard as you can. <laughs> That's the great <laughs> weird Al said. <laughs> uh, and uh, what else? Uh, oh, hey, yeah. So we love to toast out of these new mugs. That we oh, yeah. Designed. Uh, you guys should get you some. Uh, go cool. over to our Teespring page. Get you a mug. Oh, dude, we got T-shirts. Mm -hmm. We've got like duffel bags, all that Towels. kind of stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Hoodies. We designed like Nick and I spent... Um, like half a day just designing all this cool stuff yeah, we fun. even like designed some like patreon exclusive stuff but uh, we had a lot of fun man yeah you know and we priced all of it like you know we priced it about as low as you can yeah basically what? at cost <laughs> oh my gosh which is yeah, yeah. anyway check yeah. it out we would love for the for you to let the flag fly and show yes. your support out there and uh, did you and aliens are just demons you can shoot shirt oh, love that you know that was one of our first yeah of our originals yeah yeah that's great check that bad boy out isn't that cool it's got a little yeah. crosshairs on the gray's face molder you know <laughs> whatever oh man but anyway we have really uh, enjoyed bringing you this interview we hope you guys yeah. got a lot out of it and we will be here next week yep and uh hope you guys have a very blessed week absolutely i'm jonathan i'm nick we are the goslings go forth and strike down the darkness nice